Hello and welcome to Mellow Labs. Today's episode is all about ESP Now, which is what I'm using to communicate between this remote and this 3D printed Star Wars droid. It's made by Michael Baddeley and painted by my partner, the Freak Factory, and I did all the nerdy electronic stuff. But before we get into that, let's talk about ESP Now. ESP Now is a wireless protocol made by Expressive, the same people that make the ESP32 and the ESP8266. It works kind of like Wi-Fi, but without any of the internet, the routing, and other network drama. It's just straight device-to-device -device communication, super fast, super simple, think more walkie-talkies than Wi-Fi. By the way, 50 likes and I make a real working set of LEGO walkie-talkies. If you're using an ESP32, you can link up to 20 devices, but if you want the data between them to be encrypted, it goes down to just 10. And if you're using an ESP8266, the number goes down to just 6, but it does work with pretty much all ESP devices. The range very heavily depends on your hardware, your antenna, whether you're inside, outside, inside of a ferrodite cage, or whether Wi-Fi just feels happy that day. It really just depends on a lot of factors. You can get up to 200 meters or you can get up to five centimeters. Wi-Fi, welcome to the world of wireless. And now let me show you how to set up ESP Now on ESP32s right after this message from my sponsor. JLC PCB. With 19 years of experience and five state-of-the-art factories, it's no wonder that over 5.4 million engineers across 180 plus countries rely on their reliable and affordable services. Getting started is easy. Simply upload your Gerber files, get an instant quote, and place your order within minutes. It's just that easy. Whether you're prototyping or producing in volume, JLC PCB offers unbeatable pricing with one to eight layer PCBs starting from just $2. But it's not just affordability, JLC PCB delivers premium quality with lightning turnaround times. Your boards can be ready within as little as 24 hours. All thanks to their fully in-house production process, which ensures quality control at every stage. And right now, there's an exclusive offer where you can get six layer PCBs for just $5 with $30 off of your first order. If you're ready to take your electronic projects to the next level, visit JLC PCB. For this demonstration, I've set up two breadboards, both of them with ESP32s. This one is a C3 and this one is a C6. This one is going to be my sender because it has buttons on it so I can press them and it will send them over to the other ESP. And this one is my receiver and it has a single RGB LED on it. Yes, I should be using resistors, but I have so many of these RGB LEDs I'm not too bothered if I burn one, so no resistors. The first thing we need to do to set these up with ESP now is to get the receiver's MAC address. So let's plug this into my computer. All of the colors come on because there's no pull down resistors. And now we're gonna go to my settings, select the ESP. It already knows it's from the ESP32 family, but we need to select specifically which one it is. So if we go to ESP32 and we scroll down to what is in my case, an ESP32 Beetle, C3, I'm gonna click that. And then on the side here, I have a script that will print out the MAC address. So let's paste that in. The last thing we need to do in the tool section is make sure that USB CDC is enabled because otherwise it won't be able to print to the uh, serial monitor. So let's upload that. Okay, so that's uploaded. Now we can go to the serial monitor and we have a printout of our MAC address. So I'm gonna copy that, open the notepad and just paste that in for safekeeping. And now, just to make sure that everything is wired up correctly, I have a script that will just cycle through the LED colors, just to make sure that they're all running as they should be. So let's upload that. Red, blue, green. The green is very dim. I assume this LED is already on its last legs, uh, but it does work. And the last thing I want to upload to this ESP is the actual final script which receives commands from the sender and turns on the corresponding LEDs. And this is honestly super easy. I'm going to press upload before I keep talking. Uh, this is all just like pin definitions, including this. Uh, this is the actual bit that uh, connects, uh, like waits for a connection from the uh, sender ESP. And this is all just the logic to like, I've received this, I need to turn on these and these LEDs. It's super nice. If you haven't had the chance to play around with ESP now, please do. It's honestly, even without a project, it's just fun to get to know it. Right, I'm gonna wait for this to upload and I'm gonna tackle the remote, which is now. So I'm gonna plug in my remote. 
see that it's been selected and we're going to again go to tools ESP32 and we're going to select the ESP32 that we have in my case it's the ESP32 B2 C6 and again make sure that USB CD is on boot and I'm going to copy this script and paste it in here and this is the script that actually sends a message to the other ESP to tell it what it needs to do in this case it's whether a button has been pressed or released and that for all three buttons uh, the only thing that we actually need to fill in here is to add the MAC address of the uh, receiver ESP and MAC addresses are kind of weird so I'm doing this manually like that they need to go behind the 0x it's kind of annoying and last one perfect let's get rid of that and that is the entire script it just looks for this specific ESP and sends it all the information so let's upload that and wait for it to do that and then we can plug them in and it should work that's uploaded let me uh, grab this camera to show you a better view so let's do a quick test if I press that one we get blue that one is green why is that green a lot brighter than the previous green and that is red and you can see how quick this protocol actually is it's pretty much instantaneous so that's great and now to uh, slightly complicate things I'm going to add another ESP this time it's an ESP32 dev board and I've got it set up on a breadboard with a single LED just as before but I'm gonna make the code for this just a tiny bit different but first we need to get the MAC address so I found out that this specific ESP32 module is like a tiny bit slower than these two because it needs a, a tiny delay for it to properly initialize the uh, Wi-Fi hardware but th after the short delay we can go to the serial monitor press the enable button and it gives us the MAC address which we can again save on the side here like so and now we can upload the final script that will again wait for instructions from the sender uh, it's pretty much exactly the same apart from a little bit different instead of momentarily turning on the LED when we push the button I'm gonna click upload again uh, it actually toggles so it, we're on the one button press it will turn on and on another button press it will turn off so let's wait for that to upload and then we need to update the remote with the other MAC address and tell it to ping those two points at the same time okay that should be uploaded let's unplug that and plug in the remote again okay we've got it plugged in and it's detected the correct device so I can now upload the final script for the remote and again this is pretty simple we've got uh, both the MAC addresses for the two different ESPs and then here we have it send to the first peer and the second peer and then everything else is pretty much exactly the same apart from that you know it's sending to two different locations but again you can expand this up to 20 without encryptions which is a lot that's a lot of ESPs talking all together kind of scary anywho let's upload and hope that it works first try this one should blink on and off when the button is pressed down and this one should be a toggle so one that actually works that's very good so yeah that's just a very small thing you can do with ESP now I've not checked the range of this let me let me grab a battery bank okay I'm only doing an indoor test so uh, not very definitive but let's try I am in the hallway it works I am in the furthest part of the hallway I think it still worked I will now go into the bathroom I can't oh wait I'm gonna have to I press the button in the bathroom I'm coming out of the bathroom and I can see that the red LED is in fact on which means that standing in my bathroom it does work fantastic regular Wi-Fi has a very tough time reaching into my bathroom I cannot scroll while sitting on the toilet so the fact that ESP now works is pretty nice okay let's finish up this video whilst talking about my droid 
If you're new around here, you've probably not seen this guy very much apart from like in the background, but I have two videos on the process of making him and in the last video I upgraded the electronics, but since then I've completely remade them and changed everything. Um, it, they just weren't working out. The soundboard was crackly and made weird noises. I just it, I just revamped the whole thing. I made custom circuitry. By the way, all the information you need is listed on the GitHub repository. Everything from the Gerber files, the um, I don't have schematics, but Gerber files, all the code and stuff like that, and all the links to everything. Um, but yeah, so I've changed a bunch of things. The first thing I've changed were actually the wheels. The first time round, I use servo motors that were modified to be continuous so that they keep spinning, but um, those weren't great, they were very noisy and just didn't do the job very well. So I actually swapped them for N20 motors, and yes, they are the very cheap ones and their speech don't fully match, so one of them runs a little bit faster than the other, but it works, you just have to adjust a little bit. On the top here, we've got an RGB LED that hasn't changed since like version one, and on the inside, First of all, there's a speaker up here, which is a DF Robot MP3 voice prompter module, which is just like a very small MP3 player. And it is just haphazardly glued in there because I did this on one of my uh, YouTube live streams. So that was fun. But that connects to this main board that like tells the speaker to actually play sounds. And I have all the Gerber files like I've mentioned before. Uh, there are a couple hot fixes on them. They're all listed in the uh, in the description, but there's an ESP32, there's a motor driver, and there's a step down converter for the battery pack, which is four 18650s, which gives me like 16 ish volts, depending on how charged they are. Uh, I've charged this guy once and he's still running. I don't know how he does it. So the back boost converter steps down the uh, 16 volts down to like 5 volts for the microcontroller and for the uh, motor driver and for the voice prompter module. And up here we also have a head servo that makes the uh, head go back and forth. Since I've done these updates I have not like looked in inside here ever since. It's just been working flawlessly. Like let me put his head back on. Let me turn on the remote. Let me turn on the droid. He does a little jig before he, and then it just connects. It's super nice. Like the first iteration, I think used like a Wi-Fi hotspot, which you had to turn them on. I think the remote had to turn on first and then you could turn on the droid so that they definitely connected to each other. But yeah, that's that's not a problem with ESP now. It, it connects pretty much instantly. Let me go from zero to nothing. It just connects instantly, it's amazing. Uh, you can control the volume of the uh, prompter module, but I've got it set to like kind of low because when he's like around the house, we don't need him loud. But yeah, he's been, he's been doing really well ever since. So yeah, if you need more information, all of the stuff is in the repo. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Play around with ESP now. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and uh, if you can, support me over on Patreon. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. And now I'm going to show you how to set up ESP32 use uh, so many ESPPs. Too many PPs. Too many ECPPs. I see too many PPs. <laughs>